Dark Samus, and RJ is... <laughs> It's just so funny saying okay. that. Like, kind of and, uh, <laughs> yeah. Also, um, it, it would appear that um, Don Pedrino is, or RJ is playing the Dark Samus, Dark Suit Samus skin from uh, Metroid Prime 2 Echoes. Uh, so that won't be confusing at all. I don't, won't be. I mean, look at look at Dark Samus compared to compared to Samus. I mean, it's a, definitely a shade of blue while. RJ's one is brown. I mean, I guess I guess in terms of the lore, it's a little confusing. But yeah, no, no, that, no. Sure make we'll no mistake. Fine. In terms of the lore, it's very confusing. Um, <laughs> but these players are not confused at all. Uh, they are happy to go in here and start scrapping here in game number one on Battlefield. Yeah, you know, I would imagine that scrapping would actually be more so the name of the game in a Samus Ditto. Ironically enough, you know, obviously Samus, one of this game's textbook zoner characters. She's one of the first characters in the game that you think of when you think Wi-Fi character, for sure. Mm -hmm. Definitely a character that's better on it, and I don't think that's frankly debatable. But here, when you're dealing with the character that's almost exactly the same as you, with only one or two very, 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 very minor differences, yeah, he, I, I think the CQC might be a little bit closer this time around. I feel like, you know, they're going to sort of negate each other from that distance and actually hit each other like you're going to see RJ do to Don Pedrino right there, forward or off the level for the first duck. I mean, it certainly has been very, very even in here in the early goings. Um, and uh, finding finding another char charge shot there is Pedrino. Um, Pedrino really looking to take the stock off the board. 180 is definitely not what you want to see um, in any matchup, really, but especially in a ditto when you have the the kind of power that Santos <laughs> has on, um, you know, back air. Okay, that, that was a bit of a scuffed KO there, but you'll take him any way you can get him. He got Arctic <laughs> dump. Don Pedrino hit RJ with like the, only the launching hitbox of the uh, of the Samus Uppy, which yeah, yeah. you know <laughs> sent him at that weird wonky angle for it, and then somehow got a weak back air that hardly killed after that. That was a very interesting exchange that he was eventually able to find that back air for it. It was scrappy. Despite it being weak, still kill. Yeah, it was scrappy. Definitely, yeah, definitely scrappy do. Not uh, not a Scooby Doo interaction for sure. Oh definitely no no no. Yeah, one. absolutely. Oh, but, but John Petrino tried to show RJ a little bit of puppy power on the way right there, down. Hitting him back with the down. This is what I'm talking about! Look at them! Trying to punish a forward smash with a forward smash off of the block. This is a Samus Ditto, ladies and gentlemen. These guys aren't just going to hang back and just, like, shoot shit at each other for pretty much the entire game. They are going to eventually go in and start swinging at each other because they sort of don't negate each other in that way. You know what I'm trying to say, Claire. Well, and, and, and it, in, in, you mentioned they don't negate each other in that way. Because in other ways, they do negate each other, and the, and the most obvious way being in the charge shot. There's been several times already this match where the charge shots literally just cancel each other out. Um, and the, like, the zoning game is so equally strong on both sides that you might as well go in and get down and dirty because, okay, because that down stat's going to hit, hit the shield, but um, the zoning game works equally well on both sides, so it's, it's not quite as if either player has the advantage at range here. Mm -hmm. Exactly. It's just a very interesting thing. I mean, you know, as far as, like, quote-unquote dittos go, I do believe, like, I mean, they really have virtually no differences from each other. I mean, I know that uh, Dark Samus's missiles, the side B, actually, as the up throw takes the stock, I know that her missiles go very, 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 very slightly lower, if I'm not mistaken. I don't mm -hmm. know if they ever changed that, but it's something that is relatively so insignificant. So technically, Dark Samus is a little better against very short characters, like, say, Olimar or Pichu, but it's such a minor difference that it's not anything much. It's not like, you know, the differences between, like, you know, the pits or, you know, like, Ryu and Ken and whatnot. It's This is a ditto that we're seeing right now, a ditto in which Don Pedrino is retaining stage control at, swinging for the fences and trying to get this ledge guard now as neutral is once again reset he's getting a lot of insurance on this stock which is definitely something a samus player wants but finally mm -hmm. gonna get hit for his troubles right there evening out the stocks but not before tacking on 87 percent on rj and 87 percent is a, is a fantastic amount of extra credit um it's exactly the kind of numbers that you want to see because samus is a uh, character that really needs to by and large it really needs to get damage to get kills um there's a there's a bit of power behind those moves but you're not going to... Oh, I take that back because Pedrino finding the, or finding the pretty early charge shot on last stock, um, able to get that. Um, it's about as early a kill as you can expect with Samus. Um, and Pedrino using that to go up one over in this, uh, in this uh, best of. Yeah, I'm not saying I, the number because I don't know what the number is. <laughs> it, is a, uh, it is a best of three. We do best there of three fusion until 
finals specifically. So winners finals, losers finals, and grand finals, all best of five. Everything else, best of three. So hopefully that there you will, have it. That there's the Konami code for you all in the chat, and as well for uh, as well as for you, Clam Hat. I can <laughs> tell you from playing this guy on the regular, Don Padrino. Very annoying to fight against. His Samus is very, very disciplined. He loves to not even necessarily play patient, but call out jumps. He's like, he's the kind of player that very much thinks about his opponent's options while he's charging his charge shot. He thinks, okay, based on his habits, like based on this character, is he going to jump here? Is he a master type of character? Oh, is this another zoner? He's probably going to hang on the ground a little more, so I'll wait a couple of seconds and shoot it here. He very much thinks about like the 50-50s and frame traps that character like Samus creates, and turns on the aggression when he knows he has to. Like, he he's just such a disciplined Samus in the way that he plays this character, and he knows that it's the kind of Samus that can very much take on a lack of discipline, if you would. If you mash mm. against Padrino Samus, you're gonna have a bad time unless you actually know how to play his neutral. Once you do and you know how to open him up, it can be a little bit different, especially once you keep him in the air and disadvantage. But other than that, you know, it's, it's gonna be a rough ride. But it's well, a Samus it's Ditto, been, though. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 it, and a Ditto definitely changes things because um, you, can't, you can't necessarily assume that uh, somebody like Don Padrino is going to bring the same exact playstyle to the table. Although, Padrino's early goings here in game number two have been very much this sort of like disciplined lockdown control, that, control style that you've been mentioning. Yeah, that's the one. And it's like, how do you break that kind of zone? against literally not just another zoner but the same zoner you know what i mean it's mm. like i can tell you firsthand experience from me playing mario like he will catch every single even slight overextension that i as like a brawler character will do against this guy mm. once he's a disadvantage it's a different story once you can call out his options in the air but when it comes to this it's like as the forward air does not take the stock when it comes to a samus ditto it's like so much of that like sort of um as the up air takes the stock wow i didn't think that was going to kill and when it comes to the Samus Ditto, though, like, so much of, like, that lockdown type of playstyle is kind of slightly negated because, like, now, while you're just sort of, like, forcing that way in, while you're just charging the charge shot, thinking about your opponent's options, what's your opponent going to do? They're going to charge their charge shot. <laughs> so it's like, what do you even do in that kind of situation? It's all about, in this case, it's all about, frankly, who Samus is harder. And right now, it's Don yeah. Padrino. And I mean, you talk about what can you do at range. One thing that RJ has been doing a little bit is um, using the charge shot to get through the missile specifically. Um, because that's one thing where we've seen the charge shot will power through those projectiles. It, the the charge, charge shot against charge shot, they generally cancel out, but charge shot against missiles, that's one way that RJ has been able to find damage at range. An astute observation, my friend, an astute one. Character like, Character like Samus, especially Don Padrinos, they love to wait and call out jumps with how big that forwarder is. They use that move in such, not only even really a disciplined way, but and just, wanna, you know, honestly, I think that is the better term for discipline because they really do love to wait and see what their opponent is going to do before they whip out that move and just hang back with it as well to make sure it's as non-committal as they can possibly make it on top of everything else. But when you're fighting against Samus, you know, you actually have to play that more elongated neutral instead. So that's one thing that is sort of taken away from Don Padrino here. But that, I, from what I've been seeing, that's not stopping him from actually trying to close the gap against the Samus in a slightly more aggro way. Like, he's going in, like, when she's in the corner, stopping her at the mid-range, you know, like, trying to keep her in that spot where she knows she doesn't really want to be in, as the up throw should do it here, and it does. He's just playing from the kind of ranges that he knows he needs to do when it comes to the ditto as well. Long range, he knows you're both just going to be charging that charge shot, getting your thing, you know, and you can get yours, but that risks him getting his, you know what I mean? So he's definitely, Absolutely. they're both doing honestly a pretty good job at like closing the gap in between. But I got to say, uh, Padrino's been doing it a little better, as you can tell, up a whole stock this time around. And I think it's, it's we talk about like the, the lockdown control style. But I think it's also Padrino's defense that's really been the difference maker here. Um, and how Padrino has been playing in disadvantage and it, like been playing to avoid disadvantage as well because like Padrino's been holding onto these stocks to like 160 to 180 almost every single time, which is like, you cannot, that is an untenable situation for any character. Like I don't care how good your kill power is. If you're not killing until 160 to 180 every stock, you're probably not coming out of this best of three alive. 
Very good point. A game that is so very much about neutral and a character that is especially about neutral with how dominating her neutral game is. It's all about how you can keep a Samus player in disadvantage. Once you get them up in the air, what juggle tools does your character have? How can you intercept them when they try to mix up bomb as that back air takes the stock? One thing Padrino loves to do when he's in disadvantage is that he loves to stall himself with the bombs and just like sort of mix up where he's going to go. If your character has a good juggling tool, you can easily negate that and then just keep him in a bad spot where you want him. Charge shot not going to do it yet, though, as he Padrino tries to keep the offense on. Ooh. This time around, forward air, good catch on the way back down. And Padrino is going to advance to winner's finals. Very well played, if I do say so myself. He really... This was a matchup that really was kind of showing th this was kind of a test of like don padrino's strengths and his weaknesses right here because so many characters have a hard time dealing with that sort of like disciplined lockdown zoner that we were talking about before but when now he's actually dealing with the same dish that got fed to him you know so he it was a really good test for a player like him and good on him for being able to overcome uh rj here in winter semifinals. true test of his patience and his uh deter uh what am i trying to say his discipline if you would and he's gonna advance to winner's finals for it yeah, and, and and like you said, well deserved. Um, and it's it's we can really say that more and more um, because you can see a player. It seemed like Don Padrino got better as the set went longer. Um, like the the punishes were better, the neutral was better, the disadvantage. Like it the, it, it seemed like it, you know even more so that Don Padrino was like like even less challenged as we appear to be getting into another game. Yeah, I think this is going to be, I think this is technically still back in SOP 32. No, this is, uh, this is, um, wait, hold up. This is we best sure this of is, five? Okay, May, perhaps I, this is a best of five. In which case okay. we have a Captain Falcon here on the screen. Hello, RJ. RJ Falcon has entered the chat. Okay, my mistake. I mean, I could have sworn last time I did one of these fusions, it was definitely uh, best of three. So here we go. Instead, apparently we're in best See, of this five. This is why I didn't say the number. It's it's been the best of three every other time. <laughs> Whatever. So apparently, okay. Apparently, Don Petrino's up 2-0 instead. Now we got RJ whipping out the Captain Falcon instead. I'm already liking this pick better. And he, uh, definitely he is as well up about a, oh, never mind. I was going to say 50% differential, but one charge shot is all it takes to negate that on the way back. This is both a good and bad pick for a couple of reasons. It's good as the charge shot does take the stock for Don Pedrino right out of the gate. It's good yeah. because Falcon, you know, is pretty good at closing the gap against these sort of zoner characters because of just how fast he is on the ground. Second fastest character in the game in terms of dash speed. Bad for him because Nami does, uh, Don Padrino does play with a relatively good Captain Falcon in, uh, I believe, Roby on the regular, so mm. I doubt RJ knew that he sort of knew this matchup. Question is, does he know the RJ Falcon matchup? That's true. Um, nice sour spot dare to get that, to get some stage control. Um, uh, stage control is, like, Samus definitely uses stage control more, but I don't know if you can necessarily say that Samus needs it, Dark Samus needs stage control as much as Falcon does. Like, Falcon needs stage control just to have some breathing room and uh, be able to just formulate their strategy here in this matchup um, because their natural tendency to go in doesn't really lend itself to that kind of, you know, giving yourself a second, giving yourself some breathing room to kind of take stock and see what your strategy is going to be moving forward and what adaptations you need to make. Um, but RJ, in the uh, in the early goings here, or I guess the mid goings here in game number game number four or game number three, um, able to keep things even for longer of uh, longer in this match, losing the second stock, but 75%. Uh, it's that's a this is a workable situation. Definitely, and I definitely agree with what you said as well in terms of you know like being able to close the gap because Captain Falcon is the kind of character that can do that. But this is still Samus that we're talking about. This character knows how to lock down the neutral very well with that charge shot and make her very, very scary to approach. So it doesn't matter. All that speed doesn't matter if you're not picking and choosing your moments correctly. You know what I mean? And it, all that speed, it just does not matter if, like, uh, Padrino has a charge shot on deck and is ready to just throw it out on reaction, as we know that a, Sam that a Samus player of his capabilities is. And as you can tell, the Falcon pick was doing pretty well in the beginning, but it's still getting shut down, especially 
in every phase, too, the neutral is one thing where RJ is just picking and choosing his moments, but when Padrino gets, uh, when Padrino gets RJ in the air, I don't know if you noticed, but he's not letting him land, like, ever. Yeah. Wow. Ooh, great two-frame there to secure the three, to secure the 3-0 from Don Padrino. Um, and as, and, yeah, the neutral... Um, the neutral and the, like, advantage state from Don Padrino is as good as advertised there in game number three. But for me, 